Wu Minglu is a teenage boy with a traumatic childhood. His mother abandoned him and his brother after being abused by their stepfather. His brother was sold by their stepfather because he wanted money for alcohol. On that same night that his brother was sold, the city burned down, leaving Minglu as the only survivor. He later on, becomes the god of deception. As a little kid, he moved on to another city expecting a better life. But his life didn't change, he still got beaten up and bullied by other kids. Minglu grew up in the new city developing his unique set of traits, a liar, gambler, cheater and scammer. He does anything he can to get 1 billion yuan, all to fulfill his dream of living lavishly in a tower called the Platinum Tower. One night, small demon-like creatures start to appear around him while he is heading back home. As the demons are about to attack, another boy with a large sword suddenly appears and defends him. He kills all the creatures and introduces himself as Lionette, a god of lies who was sent by the system to help him correct his mistakes of lying and deceiving people. He explains that the system has labeled him as a villain for lying too much, and therefore, he has attracted the demons called Karma, who hunt the villains to keep the city in peace. He hands Minglu a monitoring device that measures his wickedness, and asks him to repent from his sins until the device's barometer reaches green. Otherwise, he will be killed either by the Karma or by Lion himself. The Karmas appear again, and Lion defends Minglu once again. Once the fight is over, Minglu candidly says thanks to Lion and hurries home without showing proper gratitude to him. Lion runs after him and confronts him about his nonchalance, but Minglu uses the neighborhood dogs to put Lion in trouble and heads home. Upon getting home, Minglu runs to his piggy bank and starts admiring his money. Suddenly, a karma appears and attacks him. He jumps out of the window and runs for his life. The small karma starts to surround him, and he accidentally throws his piggy bank away, forcing him to beg someone to save him. Lion, who has been watching everything to his amusement, jumps down and fights the small karmas. Minglu stops him from engaging against the huge one, as it may put innocent people in danger. Lion then takes the karma to an abandoned building, and they devise a plan to destroy the building with the karma inside. They set the plan in motion, but Minglu quickly gets out of the building leaving Lion behind. The building collapses making Minglu believe he's finally free. The Lion comes out of the building and confronts Minglu for trying to kill him. Minglu tries to deceive Lion, but this time Lion brings out his Pinocchio to curse Minglu. Every time he lies, his hair will grow long as Pinocchio's nose does. On the next morning, Minglu quickly realizes the curse isn't permanent as his hair is back to normal. He then walks to his kitchen and finds Lion there, who explains that he can find him anytime he wants. Furthermore, they must always be within 100 meters of each other. Minglu goes outside and finds that the 100 meter limit is a barrier he cannot pass through which forces him to take Lion with him everywhere he goes. While at school, Minglu is forced to apologize to the people he wronged to decrease his wickedness. He then heads outside with Lion to hunt some karma. Lion explains how the karmas are different from each other in ranking based on the depth of the sin committed by the villain. They make their way home and Lion realizes that he's been hurt. His scar hasn't healed. At night while Minglu sleeps, Lion gets an alert that a high-ranking karma has entered the city and is killing everyone who hasn't corrected their mistakes. He suddenly hears the screams of people dying outside, and ponders killing Minglu before it's too late for him. He punches the wall and wakes Minglu up. He then tells him to apologize to the last person and rectify his mistakes before the karma arrives and kills them both. Minglu gets scared for his life and goes to his teacher's house. Minglu then asks for his teacher forgiveness, but his teacher tells him to write a review of 5,000 words first. Minglu writes several reviews, but the teacher rejects them all, because he cannot forgive him for ruining his chance to get a promotion. Minglu punches his teacher and gets out of the house to help Lion, who stayed behind to wait for him. Lion met the Karma Austide, who had introduced himself to Lion as Goth. Lion quickly realized that Goth can control other Karmas and used his Pinocchio summon to help him fight back. He was managing to come back but gets pierced with some roots. Still, he managed to use his fast speed to pierce the karma. Minglu finally arrives, but sees Go throwing Lion to the ground after taking his source cube from the chest, a seed that preserves Lion's god powers in his host body. Minglu then punches Go's face, picks the cube up and carries Lion's body while running away. Minglu finds a place to hide until they can escape, but Go is still going around to find them. Minglu creates a diversion and throws the pursuer off. Goth arrives at a bridge and decides to give up. But in a split second, Minglu dashes from behind him and jumps on top of a truck, escaping to a different location. Goth follows them behind to a rooftop and finally catches up to them. Before Minglu can do anything, Goth stabs him in the shoulder. But before Goth can kill him, Lion wakes up with a whole different personality. 
He stops Gold from attacking and asks to team up. Gold wanted to go to the Platinum Tower, so Lion was suggesting that they go together. When Gold asks if it's okay to kill Minglu, Lion says yes. Minglu is nothing to him, but instantly, Go's arm is chopped off by Lion, revealing that Lion was lying to get his guard down. They start fighting and Lion seems to have improved in strength and agility, hitting Goth into the building, causing him to come back up in the form of a butterfly. Goth asks who this new Lion is. He replies that he isn't Lion but the old god who had possessed the body before, Mayin. Goth suddenly gets scared hearing the name. As they try to continue their fight, a suspicious-looking group of humanoids from the supervision department called Sensors appear. Minglu and Mayin immediately leave Goth to deal with them. Minglu and Mayin arrive at a safe place where Mayin tells Minglu before collapsing that he should restore the cube back into the body so that Lion can come back to life. Minglu drops Lion in the hospital, and after he gets discharged, they both meet Ivan, who was assigned to become Lion's supervisor. He gives Lion his next mission, but Lion gets afraid because he's going to meet the evil twins. The three of them go to meet the target, a boy named Ukeek, who's been abandoned by his parents and lies about them returning home. Their mission is to help him correct his mistakes just like it is with Minglu. While Keek and Minglu are looking for clues about his parents, a janitor approaches them. He tells Keek that his parents left something for him, and he tells them to follow him to go and get it. He takes them to an old abandoned building and tries to strike Keek with an axe. Minglu steps in and defends Keek. They then decide to run away after noticing a parasite on the man's neck. Men start to pursue him as if they know where they are. Minglu then notices the surveillance cameras and deduces to be the reason why they're always being chased. They manage to find an alley where they cannot be spotted by the cameras, but at that moment, someone comes from behind Minglu and attacks him. He then wakes up in the surveillance room where the director of the hospital had been watching his every move. He notices that the director seems to be controlled by a parasite. It starts to give orders to Keek's parents whom Keek approaches and hugs in excitement. The parasite tells them to kill Keek and his mother stabs him in the chest. The parasite then tries to bribe Minglu to join his world dominance team with some crepes. But Minglu cannot contain his emotions and throws the knife at the parasite. The parasite orders Keek's fathers to attack and hold Minglu while threatening him. But he only laughs at it while remembering his brother telling him to meet him. He quickly grabs the knife Keek's dad is holding and slices his arm off, followed by slicing both parents after they reveal their parasite form. The Parasite summons several Parasites, but Minglu slices them off with his knife. Left with no other option, Minglu throws his knife once again, hitting the Parasite who then turns into a huge Karma. Minglu jumps to the Karma to take his knife and stab it again, but the Parasite uses its tentacles to strangle him and then try to control his mind. Minglu starts to radiate a blue aura, while his eyes turn turquoise blue. The parasite finally reaches his mind where he finds some strange limp hand's power that destroys him. Minglu wakes up after the fight and finds that the parasite is reborn as a baby. He takes it by putting it inside a bottle. The parasite tells him that another king of karma will just be born to attack again. The new king won't be very nice to the supervisors and Minglu's friend, Lion will be killed by this new king. When the parasite says this, the new king is coming to life and attacks the supervisors who met the twins outside. They try to fight him but he's immortal, he can't be defeated. Minglu worried that Lion will be killed, hurries up the stairs to make it to the rooftop. He gets there and sees that Lion and the twins are fighting the new king, but their fight is one-sided. Even Ivan doesn't have any impact in the fight. The parasite tells him that the supervisors won't win against this new king. But Minglu tells the Parasite that he can't compare to Goth. He vows to protect Lion, just like Lion protected him from Goth. He holds out his hand and casts a spell, and the bunch of limp hands touches the king, causing him to vanish instantly. Ivan sees that the situation is suspicious and starts to suspect that Minglu may not be the real Minglu. Minglu takes Keek to Yuri, one of the twins with healing abilities so she can heal him. After the event, Minglu returns from school and meets some guy with an alpaca collapsed on his front door. He asks for help by writing a note on the floor, but Minglu ignores him at first. When Lion opens the door, the guy sees him and immediately goes to hug him. He introduces himself as Cannon and tells them about some thugs that kidnap people and eat them. Cannon tells them the story of how the thugs called Alatriophagia syndromes came to be 70 years ago. The next day after school, Minglu meets with his class monitor who is putting up warning signs about the same thugs that Conan talked about. Suddenly, they hear a scream and go to check it out. They see an Alatriophagia monster eating a person and the monitor screams terror. The monster sees them and charges at her. Minglu manages to push her away, but the monster makes a hole in the ground, making them fall inside. 
They wake up inside sewer tunnels underground and start to run away from the monsters that keep coming. They lose them for a while and Minglu gives Monitor an axe to defend herself with. While they're talking, a monster attacks Minglu who manages to block it. After some thought, the Monitor then strikes it down with her axe to save Minglu. More and more monsters start to appear, and Minglu decides they need to jump inside the water and swim up to an exit that is blocked by some bars. Minglu manages to help Monitor pass through the bars and tells her to escape while he stays behind to fight the monsters. Before he does, Lion suddenly drops from the roof and cuts the monsters up saving Minglu. Lion had received a call earlier that told him to go and save Minglu as he was in trouble, from an unknown person who called Minglu the replacement. As they try to rejoice, the king of the monsters appears and greets Lion as the person who helped kill him 70 years ago. But Lion doesn't know who he is. In his memory, it was Mayin whom Lion's body belonged to before. He fights Lion and Minglu and pins Lion against a wall, while Minglu runs away and hides. As he tries to kill Lion, Cannon suddenly appears to join the fight. Cannon and Lion team up and fight the king together. The king keeps secreting some parasite-like creatures and the two keep dodging them. But one of the parasites lands on Cannon's back and starts to infect him before Lion manages to dig it out. Cannon can no longer fight, forcing Lion to fight alone. The king deviates and tries to attack Cannon, but Minglu quickly goes to rescue him and takes him to safety. Lion tries to finish the king off, but Cannon suddenly grabs him and removes him from the fight, putting him on an alpaca to get them out of there. He contacted Ivan, who told him that the place is about to be raided by Rabid Dogs, a military elimination department from the system. Minglu and Lion hurry to get home where they find Cannon with Ivan and the twins there. They tell Lion he'll be accompanying the four supervisors to a park for their mission. But this time, they are leaving Minglu behind, as Ivan tells him that he still needs his teacher's forgiveness. But Lion is hurt by the news of leaving Minglu behind, and he runs out of the room. Minglu goes after him and tells him Lion will be free from Minglu during the mission. Lion turns his head and reveals to be Mayin, who tells Minglu that even though Ivan doesn't want him there, he must go or else Lion will die. He tells him that the place that they are going to is extremely dangerous. If Lion dies, Mayin will also die. He wants Minglu to be there so that when he sees Lion being defeated, he can call out Mayin's name so that Mayin can then take charge and save Lion. Mayin further tells him he knows about Minglu's real powers and identity, but Minglu doesn't answer and Mayin leaves. The four supervisors leave the next day and Minglu goes back to his normal life, while hoping that what Mayin had said doesn't come true, but also hoping to never see them again. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.